I guess it's not secret that Curator is actually pretty good in detecting when things uh, smell like phishing. And it does it by looking at uh, URLs, hashes of uh, IOCs that are being uh, deemed to be part of a, a phishing campaign. Uh, it can be by looking into the actual uh, payload content. So multiple ways and, and, and the, the point of this video is, okay, once Curator detects one of those cases and fires an offense, like in this particular case, what do we get in it? Well, we get a bunch of uh, logs and uh, we can actually go in there and see what can we retrieve. And you'll see that it's not much because these are just the logs in this particular case from the mail server. And what we see is that, well, an email has been sent and, and what you see is uh, a particular recipient, which is Jay Jones. And okay, so there's not much that you can really do from a SOC perspective to investigate this. And, and this is not really the job of the SOC. This is more of the guy who's going to be dealing with the incident. So let me show you what I learned from Andy Worsworth and Max Lewis, who have dealt with and helped customers deal with uh, real phishing incidents. Uh, if you send this to Resilient, and I'm going to select here the template, you can have multiple templates depending on, to help the person at the other side begin the classification of that information. And I just uh, send that to Resilient, and I'm here in the Resilient console. Let's say that now I'm not a SOC person, but I'm a, uh, a SOAR type of person. I'm a person that uh, needs to close this incident by following all the right steps that needs to be done to thoroughly do so. And if we go here into the task, we see that we get some things that were already done for me automatically. All those things have been checked and you'll see that more things, and I'm not touching any of this. I mean, these are things that the automation is doing for me based on a particular workflow. Let me actually share, sh uh, share with you what that uh, workflow looks like. If I go here in the customization settings and go on their workflows, and look for the SOP workflow, we'll see that this is actually what is happening. Uh, after the email sample is, is uh, retrieved the data from that uh, from that offense, then the, the URLs, the, the, the headers, the IP, you know, the actual sample of the email is actually retrieved from the mail server. Then all those IPs and URLs and stuff are actually consulted with the sources that Resilient has, in this particular case, VirusTotal and XForce, and see and validate the maliciousness of those individual things. You can send attachment that might be in the email to a sandbox to be detonated. After you've done all this job, then it will be quite a task if you were to do this manually. There comes a manual step. Why? Well, because after if this thing is validated as a phishing uh, incident, you're going to be taking some actions that might be drastic. Like, for example, identify who actually, let's say that in this particular email, we see that this email was sent to, in this particular case, there were five people in the company that, that were in the recipient list of this email. Uh, well, I want, to, I want to make sure that if I can validate somehow and we'll see how they actually click on those links i want to reset their password for example i want to actually delete those emails from the mail server i mean these these steps are a little bit drastic to be done completely automatically and uh, so you want to actually do it after this validation is actually being performed so let's actually go back to those tasks so with that subject and sender, you can actually go to the mail server and, and gather that, that particular email and um, extract that information, as we mentioned before, validate the maliciousness of it. And this is an interesting part. This actually makes a, an aerial query in Curator without you even knowing what Curator is. You are just following the incident. And it's basically asking Curator, well, uh, to this particular URL that we know that is malicious and this IP, can you tell me whether the file recipient of this particular email actually went to those particular click on basically click on those on those uh, URLs and went there? 
Actually, you can even see more details of it. And when, when the person is investigating this, and you see that's the email sent that the phishing uh, entity, and that topic certainly is going to get the attention of a lot of people. And uh, that's the J. Jones guide that we that we actually saw. But now, the, this part is saying, well, let me let's see the details. Out of the five people that were copying this email, when Curita, and, and I did this from Resilient without even knowing that, uh, went and looked for this particular URL and asked who, whether these guys actually went to those particular URLs, they found that out of the five that were part of the email, these four did. Okay, so that's that's an interesting information, and all that has been retrieved uh, automatically. Now we get to the part in which that person, based on the information he has seen, thinks that this is a phishing, and from what we have seen, I think that you would agree that this is it. So what he needs to do is go here and say, click uh, edit. And what type of email is, and he needs to select from the pull down, this is phishing. So I'm going to save this and mark this task as complete. I want the, the workflow to proceed with those remediation actions uh, in order to, to perform those, those, uh, those additional steps. Let's actually take a look at uh, some of these. And as you see, some of them are actually being done automatically. This reset compromised user account and password. This is out of the f those four guys who click there in, in those in those URL, uh, definitely want to reset their password. And this can be a little too drastic or not. I mean, this is an example uh, because of the type of business that this customer is in. That's the procedure that they have deemed to be uh, necessary to do. So those guys need to uh, have their password reset in order to protect the information that they handle. The email, those malicious email, why do you need to keep them in the mail server? It's best to actually uh, eliminate those, uh, delete those. You may want to blacklist the, the, the malicious URL, say that you have an EDR tool or a carbon black or whatever it is that you, and you want to actually pass to that particular tool and say, well, anything coming from this particular URL that we know it is bad, actually put it into a, a black list. And if we want to see the, the details of it, uh, for example, if we go here, we see that these are the emails that were actually removed from the mail server. And these are the guys who clicked, Joe Jones, he did, this guy clicked, this Golden Abedanyo, did and Veronica is the only one that did not click so her password is not reset but nevertheless that email is actually uh, deleted from the mail server we know it is bad so why do we want to keep it in there again and then the last thing to be done is really well we want to blacklist that particular URL from the proxies so nobody goes there that might not be a task that you will have in an incident person, a SOAR person to be able to do. That's probably somebody who administers that proxy. And what, what we do in this particular case is that, well, that fatwallet.com, uh, I want to make sure that gets blacklisted, but I open a ticket automatically in service now to have that to be performed. Once the guy in service now actually closes that ticket on his end, and then uh, you, you will see like, I'm going to click it manually, but this is what will happen automatically. And then that incident will be 100% resolved and everything is documented and you know exactly what you did. You do proactive action. So this is the way that you deal with, with, the, with a phishing incident. Now, Resilient has some components that make this, uh, creating these things uh, very easy. Let me show you some of them in the App Exchange. If I select out of the 157 apps in for Resilient and I look for Exchange, this is the piece that actually allows me to search and, and retrieve that e, uh, email, EMLs uh, piece. So I can analyze the, 
the actual mail. But if I want to see the content of the mail, and you, you don't want to actually click on it to actually see it and get yourself uh, in, in, in infected. Well, there's an app that helps in in Resilient to do that, which is URL Scan.io, which basically takes a screenshot of the actual email so the analyst can actually see all the details without uh, dealing with it. And uh, the email notification that you saw on the workflow that, that are sent to different people indicating that they were actually in a list of emails, so they have to be extra careful getting uh, any this particular type of email. This is the app that uh, Resilient used to facilitate that task, so, so you don't have to do coding for that. Uh, the interface with ServiceNow is, is another example of that, and this is the actual app that helps you perform that. This is the Carbon Black app that can help you, for example, blacklist those, those URLs. As you see, there are different components that you can grab from the App Exchange to make uh, this job easy. But I hope that by now you understand the difference between being good at detecting that phishing happen and how you successfully, thoroughly close that incident without having to know, you know, be, being a SOC person. We just follow the steps that are absolutely being told. The automation will do as much as possible so you don't have a lot of workload. And, um, and then this is the professional way of dealing with, with phishing.